equity and upside for the taxpayer, uh, forbearance for the homeowner, oversight of, of the government on what they were doing, and something that the American people understand full well, an end to the golden parachutes and the, a, a review and reform of the compensation for CEOs. Let's get this straight. We have a situation where on Wall Street, people are flying high, they're making unconscionable amounts of money, they make a lot of money, they privatize the gain, the minute things go tough, they nationalize the risk, they get a golden parachute as they drive their firm into the ground, and the American people have to pick up the tab. Something is very, very wrong with this picture. So just on first blush that Thursday night, we made it clear, meeting much resistance on the part of the administration, that those four things, equity, forbearance, uh, uh, oversight, and reform of, of compensation. Overall, uh, overriding all of this is a protection of the taxpayer. We need to stabilize the markets. In doing so, we need to protect the taxpayers. And that's why I'm so glad that this bill contains suggestion made by Mr. Tanner that if at the end of the day, say in five years, when, the, uh, when we can take a, a review of the success or whatever of this initiative, that if there is a shortfall and we don't get our whole $700 billion back that we have invested, that there will be an initiative to have the financial institutions that benefited from this program to make up that shortfall. But not one penny of this should be carried by the American people. People ask, and Mr. Mr. Uh, Spratt spoke with great knowledge and eloquence on the budget and aspects of the budget. $700 billion. What is the impact, what is the opportunity cost for our country of the investments that we would want to make? Okay, now we have it at a place where the, the taxpayer is going to be made whole, and that was very important for us. But why on the drop of a hat can they ask us for $700 billion and we couldn't get any support from the administration on a stimulus package that would also help grow the economy. People tell me all over the world that the biggest emerging market, economic market in the world, is rebuilding the infrastructure of America. Roads, bridges, waterways, water systems in addition to waterways, the, the grid, uh, um, broadband, schools, housing, certain schools. We're trillions of dollars in deficit there. We know what we need to do to do it in a fiscally sound way, in a fiscally sound way that creates good paying jobs in America immediately, brings money into the Treasury by doing so, and again, does all of this in an all American way. Good paying jobs here in America. We can't get the time of day for $25, $35 billion for that, which we know guarantees jobs, et cetera, but $700 billion. So make no mistake, when this Congress adjourns today uh, to re observe Rosh Hashanah and, and have members go home for a bit, we are doing so at the call of the chair, because this subject is not over, this discussion about how we save our economy. And we must insulate Main Street from Wall Street, and as Congresswoman Waters said, Martin Luther King Drive, and in my district, Martin Luther King Drive, and Sierra Chavez Road, and all of the manifestations of community and small businesses uh, in our community. We must insulate them from that. And so we have difficult choices, and so many of the things that were said on both sides of this issue in terms of its criticisms of the bill we have and the bill that we had at first and the very size of this I share. You want to go home, so I'm not going to list all of my concerns that I have with it. But it just comes down to one simple thing. They have described a precipice. We are on the brink of doing something that might pull us back from that precipice. I think we have a responsibility. We have worked in a bipartisan way, I want to acknowledge, Mr. Blunt and Mr. Boehner, uh, the work that we've done together uh, in a, uh, trying to find as much common ground as possible on this, but we insisted 
the taxpayer be covered. We all insisted that we have a, a, a party is over message uh, to Wall Street. And we insisted that the taxpayers at risk must recover, that any risk that must be recovered. I've told you that already. So my colleagues, let's not recognize that this congressional, um, this legislation is not the end of the line. Mr. Waxman will be having vigorous oversight this week, uh, uh, hearings this week on regulatory reform and other aspects of it. I hope you will pursue fraud and mismanagement and the rest. Mr. Mr. Um, Frank and his committee will continue to pursue other avenues that we can protect, stabilize the markets and protect the taxpayer. For too long, this, this government, eight years, has followed a right-wing ideology of anything goes, no supervision, no discipline, no um, uh, regulation. Again, all of us are believers in free markets, but we have to do it right. Now let me again acknowledge the extraordinary leadership of Mr. Frank. Uh, he has been an exceptional uh, leader in the Congress, uh, but never have his, has his knowledge and his experience and his judgment been more needed than now. And I thank you, Mr. Frank, for your exceptional leadership, Mr. Chairman. I also, <laughs> so many people worked on this, but I also want to acknowledge the distinguished chair of our caucus, Mr. Emanuel, his knowledge of the markets, the respect he commands on those subjects, and his boundless uh, energy on the subject served us well in these negotiations. But this, this is a bipartisan initiative that we are bringing to the floor. We have to have a bipartisan vote on this. That is the only message that will send a message of competence to the markets. So I hope that, I know that we will be able to live up to our side of the bargain. I hope the Republicans will too. But my colleagues, as you go home and see your families and, and observe the holiday and the rest, don't get settled in too far. Because as long as the America, this it, challenge is there for the American people, the threat of losing their jobs, the credit, their credit, their jobs, their savings, their retirement, the uh, op opportunity for them to send their children to college. As long as in the households of America, uh, this crisis is being felt very immediately and being addressed at a different level, we must come back. And we will come back as soon and as often as it is necessary uh, to make the change that is necessary. And before long, we will have a new Congress, a new President of the United States, and we will be able to take our country in a new direction. Thank you, Madam Speaker.